in an effort to keep the trucking industry as safe, reliable, and productive as possible. This video was produced to show drivers and inspectors how to maintain highway haulage vehicles. At the mine site, you'll need the following equipment. A flat quarter inch blade screwdriver, a folding type tape measure, knee pads, hard hat, safety glasses, coveralls, mechanics creeper for use on concrete or asphalt, pad for use on gravel or dirt, and wheel chocks. Select a flat area for the inspection. As the truck approaches, stand clear and signal where you would like the operator to stop. Stand clear and ask the operator to open the door. Explain that you would like to do an inspection of his truck and ask the operator to set the park brake and hold the service brake while you install the chocks. After you install the chocks, ask the operator to release all brakes, place the transmission in neutral, and see if the truck moves. Now ask the operator to turn off the truck. Climb the steps to the cab area, introduce yourself, and ask if a pre-operational check of the vehicle was done prior to being operated. Ask to see the operator's training records. As the operator looks for the training records, observe the condition of the cab, windows, and mirrors. Look at the training records date and type of training received. Check the seat belt and fire extinguisher. Explain to the operator that you will now move to the front and back of the vehicle to check lights and other functions. Signal the operator to turn on the headlights, check high and low beam, right and left turn signals, and emergency flashers. Check windshield wipers and horns, steering wheel and air. At the rear of the truck, Motion the operator to check the park lights, turn signals, brake lights, emergency flashers, and backup lights. Move back to the operator's compartment and ask the operator to raise the hood. Explain that you're going to test the steering, the brake components, and look at the undercarriage of the truck. Next, go to the driver's side front wheel and observe the linkage as the wheel is turned quickly right and left. And I'd like for you to rotate your uh, steering wheel back and forth for me. Look at the pitman arm, drag link, and tie rod ends for slack or play. No more than one eighth inch is allowed. Look at any shock mounting brackets and shocks. Instruct the operator to apply and hold the service brake when you say brake and release when you say release. Insert a flat screwdriver under the brake pad and yell brake to the operator. Brake! If the components are working properly, you will feel the brake shoe apply. Next, measure the stroke of the chamber arm to be sure that it is in compliance with the North American out of service criteria which is one and three quarter inches for a type 20 chamber. Release! Carter pins in, slack adjuster. I felt the brake apply against the drum. Canister's good and tight, everything looks good there. Ask the operator to turn the steering wheel left and right, measuring the slack of the steering wheel. To check the slack or steering lash, begin with the tires pointed straight ahead. Next, turn the steering wheel in one direction until the tires just begin to pivot. Vehicles with power steering may require the engine running to turn the wheel. Place a mark on the steering wheel, then while holding the marker at that point, turn the wheel in the other direction until the tires again start to move. Measure the distance between the two points. This is the amount of steering lash. Excessive lash can indicate worn or loose steering components. The amount of allowable lash varies with the diameter of the steering wheel, and this measurement must be consistent with the size of the wheel listed in the North American out-of-service criteria. Move to the other side and check the same items on the passenger side front wheel. Climb under the front of the truck and look for any cracks in the frame, loose or missing bolts, spring hangers, 
and axle mount bolts. Look for cracks in the leaf springs or loose or missing springs. Look for combustible material and leaks. If you can clear the front axle, continue to the center of the engine. If you can't, climb out and go back under behind the front wheel. Look for broken engine mounts, frame cracks, and cracked cross members. Look at the transmission mounting bolts and cross member. Check U-joints and carrier bearings by applying pressure with your knee or foot. Observe all mounting brackets for tanks and combustible material. Proceed to the front rear tandem and repeat the brake sequence. Place a screwdriver into or on the brake shoe and yell, brake. Feel for movement and measure the travel distance Release. of the plunger out of the brake chamber. This is usually a Type 30 chamber and is allowed two and a quarter inches maximum and travel should not exceed two inches. Do a test for each side. Brake. Relief. The adjustment's good. Cotter pins in. Stroke adjustment looks good on both of them. But I do have a problem with this rear brake on the passenger side. Come out and go to the rear tandem brakes, repeating the same sequence. Brake. And release. After checking the brakes, look for any broken or missing bolts in the frame or springs hangers. Look at the frame and cross members. Check the fifth wheel for any loose or missing bolts. Look into the frame area and see if torsion bars and bushings are intact. Turn around and look at the trailer frame and look at the components of the trailer back to the front trailer axle. Check brakes as before. Insert screwdriver and yell, brake. Brake! Release! Brake! Observe any movement and measure brake chamber plunger for travel. Yell, release. Release! Then check the S-cam bushing by checking for movement with your hand when the brake is not applied. Move to the next axle and check the same until all axles are completed. Some companies choose to remove brake shoe dust covers. In this case, the inspector would be able to observe the brake shoe movement when brakes are applied. Look at all mounting brackets, springs, and cross braces. Move out of the rear of the truck. As you come back to the operator side of the vehicle, Tell the operator you are going to do a walk around of the vehicle and would like for the service brake to be applied so air leaks can be detected. Start with the driver's side front wheel, listening for obvious air leaks. Look at the fuel tank, steps, and mounting. Listen for air leaks and proceed down the side of the trailer to trailer axles. Check each wheel for lug nuts, brake drum nuts, and rim cracks. Check the tailgate closing mechanism and proceed down the passenger side of the truck, again checking the rear tandem tires for tread depth, 1 32nd. Knots, cuts, and checking wheels for lug nuts, axle nuts, and rim cracks. Continue to listen for air leaks. As you approach the cab, check to make sure your covers are intact, check your heat shields and exhaust system. Look at the cab mounts and steps as you climb up to check the glad hands on the truck. Check the red emergency airline, then check the blue service airline. Also look at some accessories, the tailgate control and axle control. Look at the light connection and check the ladder that they're secure. Check the pogo stick making sure all the lines are free from touching any of the drivetrain axles or wheels. As you climb down, Check the windows and handholds as you move down the side of the truck. Check the tank, door, the mirrors and windows. Checking the air tanks, making sure they're securely mounted. Check the passenger front wheel for tire tread depth, 2 seconds of an inch. Check the brake drum bolts and the wedges of the wheel bolts and rims. 
Look at the seating ring, that there are no bends or fractures. Tony, you got yes. your door for me. Uh, we're going to check your uh, slow air pressure warning now. Go back up to the operator's compartment and ask the operator to turn on the key and apply the service brake until the low air warning alarm is activated. This should occur at approximately 55 PSI and below, or one half of the governor cutout pressure, whichever is less. Have the operator continue to apply the service brake until the maxi sets up on both tractor and trailer. Many newer trucks may activate at a higher pressure. Tony, I want to check the Jacobs brake on the truck. Tony, I'm going to have you set your trailer brakes, and then I'm going to go back and see if we have any air that set up your tractor brakes. Just the trailer brakes only. I'm checking the tractor protection valve to leave your trailer set up and your tractors off, right? Right. And I'll be right back with you. Very good. Ask the operator to start the truck and build the air pressure back up. Once the air is built up, ask the operator to apply the service brake, then remove the chocks. Ask the operator to set the trailer brake and gently move the tractor back and forth so you can observe the play in the fifth wheel, half inch maximum. Stay clear of the truck while checking for movement. When inspecting a tandem truck, the inspection procedures are the same as that of a tractor trailer. The only exception would be raising the bed in order to look at the rails, bed bracing, and the point where the bed attaches to the truck. If the inspection is clean without any problems, then we'll let the operator continue to work. However, if we find problems, we'll ask the operator to step down and we'll point out each specific problem we found with the truck. I'm going to issue two citations on your truck, one for the fire extinguisher and the other one on your front passenger side tandem wheel. You have a grease leak inside the wheel. There's actually grease on the shoe itself and I'll need you to, you know, clean that out. I'm going to issue a citation, but I'm going to let you run, however, because you're running on very small grades. It's mostly flat traffic in and out loading, and I'll give you until tomorrow to fix that. Is that okay? Fair Do you enough. have any questions about the citations I'm going to issue you? No, I don't. Well, I'll let you continue your work, and uh, I'll fix your citations up, and then after you load and head out, I'll give them to you on your way out. I'll be out tomorrow morning to... Uh, Check your truck and see if we've got everything taken care of. Uh, I'll ask you to get in and fire up. Let me get my chocks out of it. And once I get the chocks out of the truck, then you're free to go. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you, much, sir, buddy. Good and have a good day, okay? okay? A brake function test should be done each shift as part of your pre-operational check. The truck should be empty while being tested on an incline. Once your truck is loaded, do a brake function test on level ground before doing it on an incline. This best practice card has a pre-operation inspection checklist for your use. Best practice cards and other safety related materials are available at the National Mine Health and Safety Academy or visit our website at www.msha.gov.